I love fur bogues. Love fur bogues. Um, and I think it actually came from when Matthew Mercer changed the fur bogue when he described it as bovine. For those of you who don't know, uh, fur bogues used to be just a regular giant race with uh, kind of elongated ears, but mostly just human looking. But with Matthew Mercer and the second campaign in Critical Role, he described a fur bogue as bovine in, in feature, so very cow-like. And the art went off on this on this NPC. Um, tons of people started doing like writing or, or coloring or, or make creating this this NPC as a cow looking person. And everyone just fell deeply in love with this character. Everyone started making fur bokes uh, that look like this in their games. And me too, I did too. I think it was a wonderful change. Uh, I think it's a, a really cool, unique feature, especially with them originating from the Feywild. Like it makes sense for them to adopt uh, animalistic features while they're in there. So I just really like them. Plus they can turn invisible and they can disguise themselves. And they're just overall just like a really eccentric class to me or race to me that I really like. I can show you guys my, my I'm actually playing a um, a furball right now. She is a sky cleric, very shy. She has a, a negative one charisma, and she's kind of calling the shots. She's she's quiet, but she's got a, she's got a little fire in her. Here's Azure. Azure Stratos. She's non-binary for bold cleric, uh, sky cleric. If um, the sky cleric that I, I'm playing here is on my website, and she carries a parasol or a umbrella with her everywhere she goes. And she's looking for a giant city in the sky that her mother used to sing her as a lullaby um, that disappeared. She's found out um, about 80 years ago or 100 years ago, a bunch of sky cities in, this, in, the, in the sky and there's only one left and is wanting to find it so they can save the kind of sanctuary post-apocalyptic world that they're kind of living in. So pretty cool.